Hi boys and girls. It's Sunday morning. Well, it's Sunday at about one o'clock. And I just broke my glasses. My cheap, cheap glasses. This is such an unedited, like I am such an unedited vlogger. Look at me. Like, that is who I am right there. All right, so, um, I, Alex had to run out and do some stuff, and then he's gonna come home. He had to run a bunch of errands for a trip, and then he's gonna come home, and uh, we're gonna go out to brunch, but I'm uploading the vlog, and then I have to go run some errands of my own before we go out to brunch or dinner. So I was like, I had tried, or I had bought, these masks at Walmart, and I bought these at the five below. This one is the Soothing Cucumber Wash Off Mask. This is like, I think you leave it on longer though. And I wanna do this one at night, cause it's like 15 or 20 minutes. So these, I got them at Walmart, honest to God, and they were like, what is this one? This one's 15 minutes non drying. So, this one I don't want to use today. Okay, so I got these three that they have them all at Walmart in the makeup area and they're like literally like a dollar. And Tanya and I went to town buying them. So I'm gonna buy, or I'm gonna use this Apple, I was gonna use this polishing button, but I'm gonna use this Apple. They're from Freeman. I mean, they're probably not the best in the world, right? But who cares? And if you haven't watched my daily ritual, every morning I use this Neutrogena face scrub for men and this invigorating face wash for men. And if I don't use that, then I'll show you what I wash or I use. Do you guys wanna know all my products? Okay. I use the Jan Marini uh, skin products. This is the bioglycic, bioglycolic face cleanser. I swear by this stuff. But you just can't go in the sun afterwards. And then for shampoo, I use Biomega Moisture Shampoo and conditioner. I have the conditioner too. Hold on. You're like, this is so exciting. Oh my God. And then I use the conditioner. But when I do it, the conditioner about twice a week is a friend of mine gave me this blue Malva. It's actually blue, see? Yeah. You see, it's purplish conditioner, and then I mix it in with the other conditioner, and it whitens my hair. It makes it sparkle and stuff. So for those of you that always ask me what products I buy, I know this is not my prettiest robe today, This is my favorite robe. This Ralph Lauren robe that Alex gave me. Isn't it so nice? But this $10 cheapie from Meyer is definitely, uh... It's definitely the most comfortable. So I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna... You guys get to see a little bit of my morning ritual. It's not like every morning I would typically do a, a face uh, mask. I don't ever do face masks, honestly. I just thought it'd be fun to do them and try them differently. But I will tell you one thing that's interesting is the older you get, is that like, baths under your eyes and all of that, like, I don't even drink, okay? And like, a lot of mornings, I look really hungover until I like, wash my face, and, and like, drinking water is like, totally vital. If I drink a bottle of water, wash my face, and take a shower, I look okay. But before that, okay. do face masks with my friends all the time in high school. Who would have ever known that I was going to end up being gay? 
I've never ha done a face mask, so. With a beard. To use as a daily massage gently into damp skin, rinse well. To use as a mask and toner, apply mask to face and neck, avoiding contact with eyes. Leave on for three to five minutes, no more than 10. Rinse with warm water. So I guess you can use it as a scrub too, who knew? Not me. But this one is the apple cider vinegar one. Oh, it looks pretty, it's like pink. Look at that. Mmm, so cute. It looks like um, Play-Doh, do you remember, not Play-Doh, but what is that stuff that's real funny? You know what I'm talking about? It says don't put in your eyes, and where do I go? Right for the eyes. Um, silly putty, that's what it looks like. It smells really good. It totally smells straight up like apples. Being that I haven't put a face mask on in forever, I don't even know if what I'm doing is correct. <laughs> I probably don't need as much of this as everybody else because of my beard. You guys open stuff on your feet. <laughs> I can't believe I just showed that on the video. Oh well. You can't laugh at yourself what can you laugh at, right? I'm too short. This is kind of nice. My hair, like if just in case you're wanting to clock that receding hairline, receded like that. When I was about 23 years old, and that's as far back as it went. Okay. That's kind of fun for a dollar. If I wasn't on camera, I can tell you what I would do. It's true, I'd be standing around here in my boxers. And you guys might be like, well, why aren't you doing that? Well, because I, am, I just don't feel comfortable doing that because of my body weight. Um, but I'm trying to get to the comfortable level where I could do that. So, let's go downstairs. And get some water while I'm putting that on. I already have, look. I already made my cup of coffee and everything this morning. Mmm. Yeah, I'm a slurper. No, I'm only a slurper. I look like, what's his name on Beetlejuice? It's totally what I look like. <coughs> I'm only a coffee slurper if it's too hot. I have spent the better part of this morning trying to fix the screensaver on my Mac so that it won't turn off. Because I don't know why it keeps on doing that. Okay, processing. I'm uploading uh, my vlog from yesterday. Do you know what's really weird about all this is that you slowly get, like seriously, you slowly get like more and more comfortable on camera. I, I don't even really know how to explain it. It's like, okay, I'm like, I wonder like, do you get to the point where there's like, okay, I, I, there's nothing I won't show on camera. You know what I mean? I mean, nothing like too explicit, but like, I'm obviously not uncomfortable showing you guys me doing a face mask and all of that. So I wish I had like a plastic container for, oh, I do. Oh, And it still has water in it, gross. But, um, I think it's interesting, like, I haven't even been doing YouTube for a year yet, right? And, uh, 
We have so many around our house. I haven't even taken my medicine today. That's what I can do. Um, we have so many like plastic cups. Like, I'm obsessed with plastic cups. Like, look, I bought these last year. At, had to have all these plastic cups at my at Walmart last year. We haven't used any of them. These big ones were like 88 cents. They're so dusty. Had to have them. Never used them. But anyway, I think what's interesting is, oh, thank you, Alex, for leaving me so much ice and not starting the ice machine over. I think what's interesting is, um, that like, okay, if you go back to my booktube channel, my very first video is what's like listed as like my main channel, or is like listed as my main video. And if you go back to it, What's interesting is that you can tell that I'm like, you guys are totally getting just to see what Peter does around here all day long being totally bored. But if you watch it, you can see like what it is that I do. Um, like my first video, how nervous I am. And I'm like, hi, this is Peter. And I don't really know what's going to be different than my channel from everybody else's. But anyway, that's my booktube channel, which is really like. I did, I did YouTube videos a couple years ago. I feel like maybe I should release one or two of them. Um, I don't know if you guys would like that or not. But, uh... I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it today, actually. Um... But you get to the point where you're just like super comfortable sharing whatever on film. Like you really are on film, like on video. Like I'm, there's not really anything that I'm not comfortable showing, right? And so it's like, at what point does it change? And then I wonder like, with some of the YouTubers that I watch, like they don't seem very genuine on camera. And it's like, the more... I think this has gone past three minutes, don't you, with my face? <laughs> the more, um, but not 10, the more you become like, you try to be like really honest on camera and things like that, or just like share pieces of yourself. And at this point, I'm sharing things about body image. And, you know, I was really upset yesterday because a video of mine got, and I don't care that it got demonetized for money, but what it, bo it bothers me is that the issue is, um, I did a video on body dysmorphia on my other channel. And they, it got flagged. And I was like, why is this video flagged? There's absolutely nothing wrong with this video whatsoever, you know? It's just about body dysmorphia. So anyway, um, which I have, and I talk about, you know, loneliness and anxiety, and I talk about dreams and fulfilling your dreams and being passionate. And I show my relationship and I show everything about my personal life, you know? And it's like, so then when you watch other vloggers and they're like, hi, how are you? Oh my God, what a beautiful day. I'm like, Phony ass. I can't handle that. So I know that's so horrible, isn't it? I shouldn't be like that, but I shouldn't be like that. But then yet again, there needs to be somebody out there calling that shit out. But I do like to watch happier vlogs from time to time. Don't get me wrong. I do. But this is like hard. But at the same time, I like to watch real. I tried to turn that. Uh, just my two cents. <laughs> but that is a lot of work for beauty, okay? For $1.29. Like, I could not get that out of my beard. Maybe if I didn't have a beard. But, like, look. I, it's, like, basically my base foundation. No, I, that was a lot to get off my beard. I mean, maybe if I was sitting around with the girls doing face masks or something, that might be kind of fun. But, like, that's a lot of work for me. I'm really, like, people think I'm real high maintenance. I'm totally not. How do you open this? Uh, oh, I see. That was pretty easy. <laughs> see, I said I wasn't high maintenance. Um, but I'm really not high maintenance. And I still don't have it off of my face. Like, oh, well. It does feel good, though. My face feels all refreshed. So, anyway. Well, now I guess I'm going to go run errands. I took all of this stuff out of the bathroom so that I could 
do this little morning routines video for you guys because there's no space in this bathroom. The things I do for you. <laughs> so Alex just called and he is done with his little thing that he had to do today. So he's like, meet me at Cafe Fattishu for brunch. So I'm meeting Alex at our favorite brunch place, Cafe Patashu. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna have a chicken salad sandwich or a turkey sandwich there, because they have a great turkey sandwich with cream cheese. And uh, it's really good. Or I kind of like, I haven't had a salad in forever. I've like been craving salads lately. Maybe it's just all me getting prepared to like, go into my vegetarian mode. You know, as a vegetarian, you don't have to eat a lot of salads, but when I was a vegetarian for so long, like, I ate a lot of salads. I actually, I would, like, at that time, like, I would, what I would do is, I would go to the deli section of Whole Foods. This is, people are like, what did you eat when you were a, val a valentine? <laughs> when I was a valentine? When I was a vegetarian, um, I would literally every day, this, I have a feeling this vlog is going to be long because it's just like, I'm like spurting just little parts of my day all day long. But anyway, when I was um, a vegetarian, so I was a vegetarian for about six years. Um, most days I would go to Whole Foods and I would go to their like deli section because they would always have like fresh things that they put out. Like I got, I, like I ate a lot of eggs, like egg salad sandwiches. I like, they have the best egg salad sandwiches in the world. I ate it so much that probably I would gag a maggot if I ate a egg salad sandwich today. And then they had these things there too. If you have a Whole Foods that are so good, they're like corn patties that you can like get and heat up and they're delicious. Um, and they actually had them like in the deli, like with like uh, the couscous and the orzo salad and things like that. And I would always get those kinds of salads, like little side dishes of it. And um, so I would get like an egg salad sandwich and then like one of those corn things and like some kind of special drink, like lemonade or something like that. And then I would get like, I don't know, chips or, I mean, I ate pretty healthy, but the problem was is that like I was spending like 30 to, 30 to $40 a day, 30 dollars a day in the deli section of Whole Foods as a vegetarian. And I also was lifting a lot too. Like I, I'm sure you guys cannot believe this, but um, if you go on my Instagram, you could probably see some pictures, but I was like lifting a lot. I was really in shape. I was running every day. I was running about, uh, five to 10 miles a day. I was lifting about three to four days a week. And so I would eat a lot of those protein bars. There was these ones called Detour and um, they were high in calories, but I didn't really care because I was like eating so healthy and working out a lot. But they were like really high in protein too. They had like 30 grams of protein in them. They were delicious. Oh my God, I miss them so much. So that's kind of like my plan for the spring and the summer is to like get back into that. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that works out for me. <laughs> Anyway, I guess that's it. I don't know why I'm just sitting here rambling about nothing. I'm so excited to go eat. I'm hungry. See you in a little bit. Hey guys. I was like sitting here trying to like pick up from where I left off and I don't really remember the last thing that I <laughs> vlogged today. I vlogged my face mask and all that. And Alex and I went out to brunch. Was brunch the last thing that you guys saw? You're like, yes. Or before I went to brunch. And then Alex went home. We had a great brunch. I took pictures of it, put it on Instagram. Go, go see my Instagram and see what I have for brunch. And then Alex went home and he uh, put away all of his laundry and he had just done a bunch of laundry. And I went and ran a bunch of errands getting stuff that I needed for our trip. Like everything I went to go get, it just was a disaster. None of it turned out. So, then I came home, I had a sobriety thing tonight, and then I tried to uh, take a nap before that. But we got this Asian box, Y box, that we wanted to uh, like do the video for. And we've been meaning to do it for like two weeks, but like I was sick and then Alex wasn't home. And so we finally, I took a I got up from my, I couldn't sleep. So I got up, I took a shower, 
And uh, we did that video, which is up on my other channel, or it should be by the time that you're watching this. And uh, yeah, that was really fun. And then I uh, went to my meeting and I came home and Alex was going to bed and so I laid in bed with him for a little bit and we talked and laughed with the dogs and that was nice. And then I went and I drove around and listened to my audiobook and um, then I pulled into the grocery store of my life, right? Grocery stores, post offices, and Meyer. And I uh, listened to, or I watched, I don't know what it's called, Splash of Bleach or something like that. It's just like true crime. I didn't even, I've never heard of it before until I watched this guy's other channel um, that I talked about yesterday. But it's a, this documentary about the possible like conspiracy that Kurt Cobain was killed, actually. It's really interesting and it's really well done. But let me just talk about that Dear Zachary for a second. <laughs> oh my God. I sat in my driveway last night and watched the last half, of, half an hour of it. it. That movie, that documentary, blew me away. Like, I literally bawled my eyes out like the last 10 minutes of it. Just bawled. Solid bawled my, my eyes out. It's like such a spooky, strange, true crime documentary. But at the same time, it's like so endearing. It's like such a great documentary. You guys, if you have Netflix, go watch it. It's called Dear Zachary. Because the thing I hate about Netflix is... The one thing I hate about Netflix is, well, two things. One, you can never, they don't have a lot. It seems like they have a lot, but then I feel like I've watched every documentary on there. Which is, that's why it's nice to find new documentaries that I haven't seen. <coughs> so I can't believe I hadn't heard of this before. Zachary. It was so well done. <coughs> but, um, what was I going to say? Peter, what were you going to say? Oh, the uh, the one thing I hate about it is that, like, they seem to take stuff off of there every once in a while that's pretty good. Like, you know, stuff's not on there forever. So, definitely go check out Dear Zachary if you like documentaries. Um, I think it's called Dear Zachary, Letter to My Son. Or Letter from Your Father or something like that. It's really profound. So, yeah, that's been my day. I don't have tons of wisdom to bestow upon the world tonight. <laughs> just don't feel like that. You ever feel like, just like, la, la, la. I'm very content tonight. I feel very content. I just, I feel like my mind is just at peace. And um, I'm so busy. Like, I don't mean in life. Like, my mind is so busy. It's just never settled. I don't know if you can tell that from my videos, but like, I remember when, um, so I got diagnosed with ADHD at 19 or 20, really late. Like, it, I was like, it was like, not, like, when I got diagnosed with it, like, a lot of people didn't really talk about it. Like, and it's interesting because I was tested when I was a kid and I didn't test for it. Um, And I am not somebody that loves diagnoses. So I actually, this is what happened. I had a therapist that I was seeing at the time and he was like, let's just do this test. And I was like, okay, so we took the test. And I mean, that was basically how I got diagnosed. It's not like I went to a psychiatrist and they put me on medication because they didn't. And because of my history using drugs, my therapist was like, I'm going to give you some books to read to teach you how to turn it into being an asset. And I remember that I read this book and it was called, I don't know why I remember this book, but this book was called Driven to Distraction. And I just remember that title because that title of that book is exactly how I feel like all the time, like Driven to Distraction. Um, if you came to our house... Um, there are a lot of, I mean, you guys have seen most of our house by now. I mean, it's not orderly, but like I had to kind of get used to that. I'm very OCD as well, which I think most ac alcoholics and addicts are in some way or another. I used to have like really kind of severe OCD where I would like count and things like, and I still do every once in a while, but I know what the OCD is about today. Like the OCD is when I feel like areas of my life are out of control. It's my need to try to control it or I think something bad's going to happen. Um, if you have OCD or you've experienced it or you know 
know family members, you know what I'm talking about. And it's some crazy shit. It's like, if I don't tap this door four times, something bad will happen. Like that's really, your mind really thinks that. And really the way that I fought it was just forcing myself through the action of not doing those things and just going, okay, this is how it's supposed to be in the world right now. Like, it's I'm not supposed to, like, control it through some number, which is so funny because did you ever watch the movie Lost when they had to push that button every hour? I always thought that that was, like, they were subliminally talking about OCD because that's such a way that an OCD mind would work is that you have to touch this button, like, every 24 hours or the world is going to end. Did you guys watch Lost? So, anyway, I always thought that that was, like, an OCD thing. But, um... You guys were like, Peter, you're just full of all kinds of things. I mean, like, I do feel like I suffer from a lot of different, like, issues, but, like, I've learned how to control them in my life today to some degree. To a lot of degree. I mean, I've never been medicated for ADHD. I do think it has a lot to do with why I became a cocaine addict. Um, because when I would use cocaine, I didn't really recreationally... I, I recreationally used cocaine. But when I used cocaine, I felt right with the world. And I'm not condoning it, and I'm not saying that anybody should do it, because I think it's a horrible drug. It took me down really quick when I started using it. But I can just remember, like, okay, so I was with my friend the first night that we used it, and we went and we hung out with these people, and when they brought it out, they were like, all these different, we were going to smoke it, we were going to do this, and she was terrified. She was like, Peter, you're so addicted to everything. Please don't do this. Please don't. I was like, girl, I can handle it. Don't worry about it. And she was like, I just know how you are. You get so addicted to everything. Please don't do this. Please don't do this. I can remember her in this apartment. And I was like, I'll be fine. That first night that I did cocaine, I cannot even tell you how much cocaine I did. We snorted so much cocaine that night. I was probably at this house from like 10 or 11 until like four, three or four in the morning. And she was like, you're never going to fall asleep. You're never going to fall asleep. You know, that you're going to be up for days, blah, 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 whatever. And we did so much cocaine. I remember we, like, smoked Primos, which are, like, cigarettes with cocaine in it. We, like, gummed it. We, like, snorted it. We, like, every way that you can do cocaine, we did it. She didn't. She didn't do any. She was like, no. She would smoke weed and drink. But other than that, she was, no, 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 no. And I will never forget, she dropped me off at my apartment, and I walked upstairs, got in bed, and went right to sleep. <laughs> That's the cocaine addict I was. I felt amazing on cocaine. I felt so centered, <clears throat> so balanced, and my life just seemed like I had order to it. Now, what would happen the next day when I would wake up or hours down the road because what would happen is I literally at first would have to use it like every two hours, every three hours maybe, and then it got down to every hour and then every half an hour and then I was just constantly, constantly, constantly bumping cocaine. And I really, that was typically mostly the way that I used it was snorting cocaine. And uh, so I started using cocaine about a year before I got sober. That last six months was just disastrous. I mean, it just went downhill real quick. And uh, I honestly, looking back, I have no idea how I had the money for the cocaine. I just don't, I don't even know where the money was coming from. It's really scary to think, you know? And, uh... I mean, that's not the scariest thing. There's so many things that could have happened that didn't happen. I'm so glad I'm still here alive. Um, and the really scary thing is that I really only have one or two friends that I used it with. Other than that, nobody even really knew that I was using it. And I was a really a private cocaine addict. Um, I had somebody that I would go get it from. Which is that such a weird story. I, you guys are probably like, why are you even telling us this? But because I think it's the danger of how it goes. So let me just tell you what's so scary about this is that when I started using it, I actually bought my cocaine from a drag queen. And then was somebody very uh, like inner city. That was scary. Um, I one time walked into a house by myself about 3 o'clock in the morning. 
these three guys there, all holding guns, playing with guns. And one of them made me imitate oral sex with this gun, um, or he wouldn't sell me the cocaine. And I can remember afterwards, he pulled a gun from my mouth, and he like, sh like, it was like a revolt, like a pistol, like a revolver. He like threw open the thing, and like the bullets, fell. like it was a loaded gun, and I didn't think it was loaded. And um, so after that, I was done <laughs> getting cocaine there. And um, it's so weird thinking back on it. Like, I talk about the drinking a lot. <clears throat> but these are the stories I don't talk about. These are the parts that really scare me of where my addiction took me. And, um, you know, it's really weird what happened. I don't even really know how, like, I happened to just kind of meet this person out one night. And... She and I partied in the bathroom and she gave me her number and she's who I started buying my cocaine from and she lived in a house and she had kids and it was disgusting. But like, I mean, her house was clean. She lived in a neighborhood, a residential neighborhood. And, but I can remember going over to her house and her kids being there and stuff. And, and I can remember even <laughs> like, that's where you, you like, when you talk about hitting your bottom, like your bottom, you lower your bottom, you lower your bottom, like, I can remember being there the first time and thinking, this is so wrong. There are, like, kids here. And if you guys, like, have, you've watched my videos now, you know how much I adore kids. And that I think I adore innocence. And I can remember being there the first time. And, or, like, I think she had, like, a child that was, like, like, no, they would have, he would have been walking. So maybe, like, one, one and a half. And I was, I said something, I, like, pointed to him. He was in the other room. And she was like, he's fine. Don't worry about it. And I was like, okay. And like now, I mean like, I would never, like I can't, I just like, I'm so protective of kids. It's like all of my morals and values went out the window with my drug use, you know? I just, and I really think that when you start getting really deep seated into addiction and alcoholism that you lose yourself and it's kind of like you go off the road and then when you get sober, you come back on, but like you come back on so far down the road that you were on before that you've like missed a lot. Does that make sense? And I think that's why a lot of people when they like start using when they're teenagers and they get sober later in life, they're emotionally not developed. And I was emotionally not developed at 22. I was like 22 going on about 15. Conversationally. I could act like I was 30 or 35, you know? I could really play the act. But, like, inside, I had no um, I had no emotional development. I didn't know how to act. I didn't know how to talk to people and tell them my real feelings and my emotions. And um, how did I get into talking about this? I don't know. I was, like, turned on the camera. I was like, I have nothing to talk about tonight. Now, look, I have all this stuff I'm talking about. But, you know, it's just, it's, I'm so thankful that I'm out of that, like, that ugliness and that darkness and that I mean I was just watching that documentary and they were talking about Courtney Love and her drug use and stuff like that and it's just like so dark you know it's like it takes you to a dark place I don't care you know if you're snorting cocaine <coughs> off of expensive mirrors and expensive hotel rooms and you're surrounded by people that are physically beautiful and you have millions of dollars in the bank, it's just as dirty as if you're doing it off of a toilet seat in the middle of the ghetto. Period. That's just the reality of the world. And if you're fooling yourself and thinking that it's different, you know, whether, if you're drinking every night to the point of blacking out or passing out, you know, whether you're drinking Manischewitz wine from the grocery store that's $3 a bottle or Wild Iris Rose, you know, off of a out of a paper bag on the corner of the street versus, you know, Kendall Jackson at $10, $12, about $15 a bottle and a nice stemmed glass at home, you're still an alcoholic, you know? And I think, like, that was something I didn't understand for a long time. I could dress it up and make it look pretty. And actually, I thought a long time about um, writing a book about my mom's uh, addiction or her alcoholism and my alcoholism and our sobriety and how they aligned. And I was going to call it Pretty Drinker. Because my mother always, to me, she would, you know, she, I didn't know that she blacked out till later. But she passed out. So she would, like, go to bed and go to sleep. 
or fall asleep in the chair. So I never really, like, she always looks so pretty, you know, like, drinking, a, you know, a glass of wine or a martini and smoking a cigarette. But in reality, it was just as ugly and dirty as anything else that anybody else was drinking that was devastating their life. And I didn't see it that way. I looked up to that. I thought it was appealing, you know, like, that's what you did. You had cocktails in the evening and, you know, smoked cigarettes and looked fabulous. Like, I thought that's what life was. And, uh, that's so not what life is. And, you know, my mom got sober at 51 and I don't think she really started living until she got sober to some degree. And she was such a cool lady. And, uh, I just don't even think she really knew what she was capable of until then, you know? And I think we forget, too, that alcohol is a depressant. So if you're a sad person and you're drinking, it's just going to make you sadder, you know? But, man, I'm telling you, those next days that I would wake up after using cocaine, I mean, like, okay, so I would use it, I would use it, and then it was, like, down at the end, it was like I ran out. I, what happened was I didn't have any money, and I would go beg for it. And then, no, we, I'm not selling, I'm not fronting you any more cocaine, and please, please, please. And then I would come up with the money somehow. I don't know how. But um, I don't, I really don't remember how, but I can remember those next days of waking up and just, like, it was horrific. And I never used heroin, but I know that, like, uh, thank God, I probably would have been a, I mean, heroin is just killing this country right now. And, um, but I know the withdrawals from heroin are, like, 150 times worse than cocaine. Like, cocaine, you feel shitty the next day, but you're not like, I gotta get some. Like, it's not like that. And I don't care. It's like when people talk about LSD. It's like, I saw textbook devils and the world changed. No, you don't. That never happened to me. I ate my fair share of acid and that never happens. Bullshit. People are like, I saw little people and, you know, things come out. No, you didn't. You're a liar. <laughs> There's, I never, I ate enough acid. That never happened. I remember sitting at Fair... I, I almost talked about where I used to work. I remember sitting at a treatment program that I used to work in, and we had to watch, throw these movies in that, for parents to watch, and one of them was on LSD, and it was all these people being interviewed. And that movie really wasn't that bad, but I remember they had this one guy, and he was like real punk rock, and he was like... And he says textbook devils in his thing. And I remember the first time I saw it, I was sitting back with this other counselor, and I looked at her, and I go, and she had never used a drug a day in her life. And I looked at her, and she was like, and I, she said something, and I go, that's not how it is at all. She was like, you didn't see, like, devils and, like, people coming at you? And I go, no, never. I mean, maybe if you hit 850 hits, acid or something, I don't know. I mean, I always did things to extremes. I never saw that. But I didn't like LSD. So, like, you know, sometimes I feel like my life is kind of boring. I listen to audiobooks and I read and I watch movies on Netflix and I lay down at bed night with my dogs and my husband. But, like, my life is, like, I like that simplicity. I don't want that mess. Like, I don't know what I was thinking that that was ever, like, any fun. And then when I realized it wasn't fun anymore, I was afraid to give it up. Like, I didn't know who I was without it. You know, it's terrifying to think that. And I think that's what happens to so many people. Is they're like, well, who am I without this? And, you know, it's like... The reality is, for most people, they're so afraid to go to treatment. And I'm like, listen, okay? You go to treatment for, like, a week. You get detoxed. You're totally fine. Life, the life outside has not changed. People have gone on with their business. And then you come out, and you learn how to live a sober life. And that's really what it is. You get the drugs out of your system, and then you learn how to live a sober life. And it's amazing. It's miraculous. You know, it's... You know, beyond my wildest dreams, as my sponsor says. And, you know, I, I believe that today. Like, I have a life beyond my wildest dreams. It's absolutely amazing. You know, and uh, I should be dead. I should be dead or I should be incarcerated. And um, I got twisted up into some things that were very, very ugly. And I don't know how I got out of it, but I did. And I'm thankful for that. 
and it doesn't make me sad like you know like it's like it makes me joyous but it also makes it like my life makes sense like everything has kind of built on it so like for me when I talk about being a spiritual person it's like I can't look at my life and not be a spiritual person because that would be ignoring all of the signs and the things that fit together and have happened and like it's just random stuff that has happened in my life and I look at it and I go there is such a symmetry to this you know, like when I was talking about the, like the red string of life that goes through things, there's such a symmetry to this that I have to believe that it all happens for a reason, you know? Like I do, you don't have to believe that, but I have to believe that. And um, because it all makes sense somehow. And I think a lot of times too, when things in my life happen that don't make sense, that then gives me the opportunity to look at it and go, okay, um, so what do I need to do with this? Well, I need to sit back maybe and just think about it for a while because maybe more more will be revealed. Maybe more will show what's supposed to happen, you know? And I can remember when I first got sober, none of it made sense to me. I just was like, this just all seems pointless. You know, it just seems like this whole life that I lived just seems ugly and pointless. I don't understand any of it. And I don't understand why all this stuff happened to me and just all of it was ugly and dark and I was mad at everybody and I hated everybody and now I know like it happened so that I could have an amazing life because had those things not happened to me in my life I wouldn't be grateful for the small things that I have today you know the, the little things that I have the uh, just you know having Boo Radley snuggle on my chest when I go to bed at night like that's the best feeling in the entire world so yeah, I think that's all I got to say for tonight. That was rambly as long as hell, wasn't it? <laughs> all right, I love you guys so much. Night.